Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. This is just a series of short talks about life in the universe and things that I find interesting to do with life in the universe. It just seems like uh, with a pandemic raging, it's an appropriate time to think about uh, life in its wider context. So today I'm going to talk about uh, something I think is very interesting, which is, is there life elsewhere in the solar system? Now, of course, if you'd asked this question in the 19th century, uh, people like Percival Lowell would have told you there are Martians on Mars building canals and civilizations. And we've pretty much explored our solar system well enough now to know that there are no other civilizations in our solar system, or at least ones that are obvious. Um, so we live in a solar system without intelligent civilizations. But that has not changed the question because one other question we might ask is, is there microbial life? Things like bacteria living on other planets. And if you'd asked that question 30 or 40 years ago, the answer would have been, well, we should look for life on Mars. Here is a planet that four billion years ago we know had copious quantities of liquid water on its surface, evidence for lakes and rivers and, and ponds. Uh, clearly, this was a place that had liquid water in contact with volcanic rocks. And if you go to places on the Earth that have volcanic rocks in water, like Iceland, you'll find them full of life. So surely Mars must be covered in life. So 30 or 40 years ago, Mars was really the primary target for looking for life elsewhere in, in the solar system. And indeed today, it remains uh, one of the best targets for looking for life. We might go and look for present day life, certainly not on the surface. The surface is very dry and drenched in radiation. So the best place to look for past life, um, for present day life rather, would be in the deep subsurface, deep underground. But past life uh, may have existed on the surface and in those ancient rivers and lakes, and we might look for fossil evidence. And 20 or 30 years ago, that would have been the end of this discussion because that was really um, the only place people thought would be a very good place to look for past or present biology. But since then, we have found many planetary bodies in our solar system that could be really good places to look for life. And that's why astrobiology or the search for life beyond um, Earth has become so thrilling in the last few decades. So let's think about some of these other places where there could be life. Well, one place is Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter. And this is a moon about the same size as our own moon. It has a white icy surface that looks like it's very recent. And we think that beneath that icy surface is an ocean. In fact, there's very good evidence for an ocean beneath the surface of Europa. And one line of evidence is the fact that Europa has its own induced magnetic field. So when you go to the airport and you walk through the metal detector, if you've got something metal on you, that metal object will go through the magnetic field. It will induce its own magnetic field and set off the alarm. Uh, in the same way as Europa goes through the magnetic field of Jupiter, it creates its own induced magnetic field. And that tells us there is something conductive beneath the surface. And people think that, that conductive material could be an ocean, a salty ocean. And this will be a very challenging place to explore, but one could land on the surface of Europa and look for evidence of life on the surface of that moon if some of the ocean has come up to the surface. Or you could try and drill through into the ice crust, through the ice crust into the ocean and get a sample of ocean water. That would also be a very challenging objective. So there's Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter, another place that we might look for biology. It turns out that there are probably deep oceans in Ganymede as well, and Callisto, which are two other moons of Jupiter. So around Jupiter, just that one planet with three moons that probably have deep subsurface oceans, liquid water, one of the basic requirements for life where we might try and find evidence for, um, for life. If we go further afield to Saturn, we find Saturn is orbited by a tiny little moon called Enceladus. And Enceladus is only about 450 kilometers in diameter, not much bigger than the UK. And yet the Cassini spacecraft that visited the Saturnian system saw liquid water gushing out from the south pole of this moon into space. And it was able to fly through those plumes and look at their composition. And what did it find? It found that those plumes were made up of water. And within that water, or all sorts of organic compounds, carbon-based compounds. Now, we don't know whether they are little fragments of life. Uh, maybe not. Maybe they could just be ancient organics spewing out from the interior of the moon. But here we have a moon where there is liquid water and carbon-based material deep in an ocean beneath the surface of that moon. If you want a place to look for life, that is probably one of the most um, uh, promising places to try and search for life, where there is liquid water 
and organic carbon. Even on Mars, we still debate about whether there is liquid water on the surface today and where it might be. And we also have big debates about carbon containing compounds, which have been detected on Mars, but at quite low concentrations. But here we have a moon orbiting Saturn that's spewing out liquid water and carbon compounds into space. And in theory, you could just go and collect a sample of that plume, bring it back to Earth, or do some analysis uh, there in orbit around Saturn and see whether those plumes contain life. So what's thrilling about this is that unlike several decades ago, now we actually have real locations in the solar system where we know there is liquid water and carbon containing compounds needed for life and other things as well, as well as energy supplies. So we can now go and test the question, is there life elsewhere in the solar system? We don't have an answer yet, but we have good places where we can finally get an answer to this question rather than just speculating. Onwards, we might think about Titan, another moon of Saturn that we think has a deep ocean beneath its surface. Um, it's so cold, some people think it must have some liquid ammonia in there in order to maintain it in a liquid state at such cold temperatures. So beneath the surface of Titan, there could be an ocean that we could explore for life. Even on the surface of that moon that has giant lakes of liquid methane and liquid ethene and ethane and other um, carbon compounds that are raining out of the atmosphere, complex hydrocarbons, people have speculated about life in liquid methane. That's a little bit more outlandish. Uh, the temperatures are very cold, about 94 Kelvin on the surface of um, of Titan. So this is much below 150 degrees uh, Celsius, very, very low temperatures. That's much lower than temperatures at which we can find life on Earth. So it is really speculative to think that there could be life in such a cold environment, but we could certainly go and explore that moon for the possibility of life. And in fact, the Dragonfly mission from NASA, which is a, an automated robotic drone, will go to Titan and look for uh, the possibility of biologically interesting molecules, maybe even life in these strange environments. So even out there in Saturn, there are places where we could address this question, is there life elsewhere in the universe? Going further afield, uh, Neptune, uh, farther out in the edges of the, uh, of the solar system, has a moon called Triton. And that is a geologically, or seems to be a geologically active moon. The Voyager spacecraft took images of uh, nitrogen being erupted from the surface of what we think is nitrogen being erupted onto the surface of that moon. There are also interesting dark splodges that could be organic material. Some people think that Triton uh, had, or maybe even has, a deep subsurface and ocean. And outlandishly, people are also speculating about the possibility of an ocean beneath the surface of Pluto. There are areas of Pluto that are quite subdued and suggest that there may be uh, warmth in the interior of that dwarf planet and possibly even a deep ocean on, on in that dwarf planet, either now or in the past. And if you think about that, that really is an astonishing thing. If someone had said to you, you know, 50, 60 years ago, I'm a biologist and I want to go and look for the conditions for habitability, even for life in Pluto, people would have thought you were completely and utterly insane. But now people are talking about that. We still don't know whether it is a mad idea. Maybe Pluto has no significant subsurface ocean. And even if it is there, maybe it's not habitable. But nevertheless, the idea that liquid water could exist beneath the surface of these distant planetary bodies is an astonishing thing. And it's greatly widened our ideas about where to search for life um, elsewhere in our solar system. It goes beyond Pluto. Uh, the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, Ceres, has also been found to have uh, evidence for liquid water beneath its surface. We look at the surface of that moon, as was done in the NASA Dawn mission recently. What you see is craters with bright white splodges in the middle of them. And those white splodges seem to be salts, things like ammonium salts and carbonates, that suggest that beneath the surface of that moon, there is liquid water forming different types of salts that then erupt onto the surface of that moon and, um, and basically uh, become trapped inside craters where we can observe them. That is also an incredible thought. Uh, again, 40 or 50 years ago, if you said, I'm going to go and look for life in an asteroid, people would have thought you were a little bit crazy. But here we have a large asteroid in the asteroid belt that has very good evidence for subsurface briny fluids that may or may not be habitable. So where does this leave us? Well, we still don't know whether there is life elsewhere in the solar system, but now we have an astonishing array 
of different planetary bodies that could support liquid water. And the question now is this, do any of these bodies of liquid water um, have conditions that are that are suitable for life? That's the first question. Forget life. The first question is, are the conditions even suitable for life? Because if you think about it for a moment, we could have liquid water that is suitable for life, but has no life in it. If life never originated in these places or was never transferred to these places from a life bearing planet like the Earth, then we could have oceans that are very suitable for life, but contain no life. So that's the first question. Do we live in a solar system of water bodies uh, where water is essential for life, but these water bodies are completely dead and uninhabitable, completely unsuitable for life? Or could we live in a solar system with lots of water bodies that are in fact suitable for life? And if we find that these water bodies are suitable for life, the next question we can ask is, do they actually contain life? Did life originate there or come from somewhere else to colonize these oceans? Are there other planetary bodies that contain life in our solar system? So the question, is there life elsewhere in the solar system, has not been answered. But what's thrilling is that there are many different places where we can now attempt to answer this question. But more than that, we shouldn't be depressed if we don't find life in these places, because we all get fascinating insight into whether liquid water, one of the fundamental requirements for life, can come in all sorts of different varieties that is completely unsuitable for life. We might find that some of these water bodies contain ions that make them very poisonous for life that make the water activity, as we call it, very low or make them toxic in some other way. We might discover that liquid water, one of the basic requirements for biology, is very abundant through the universe, but most of it is in a state that is unsuitable for biology. We could also discover that there are many water bodies in the universe that are suitable for life, but life never originates in those places. In other words, we live in a universe of habitable environments but most of them are uninhabited. They do not have life within them. So there are fascinating questions ahead in all of this. What I think is most amazing about this is we're no longer sitting around speculating about alien life. We now have good locations in our own solar system and not just Mars, many locations, uh, moons around Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto even, asteroids in which we can investigate this question. And that means that in the next few decades, we can finally get some sort of answer to the question is there life elsewhere in the universe? And even if we don't get uh, a positive answer to that, we will learn an enormous amount about the distribution of conditions or not, as the case may be, for life in oceans and other liquid, watery environments throughout the solar system. And presumably, therefore, we'll get some idea about the possibility of life elsewhere in the universe. Thanks a lot for joining me again. Uh, take care of yourselves.